On January 7, 2026, something historic happened. For the first time in decades, the U.S. government released nutrition guidelines that actually align with prostate health research. Secretary Kennedy and Secretary Rollins stood at the White House, announced the Dietary Guidelines for Americans 2025 through 2030. Eat real food, Kennedy said. Simple, clear, revolutionary. For years, I've worked with clients trying to lower PSA through diet. They'd ask, what should I eat? I'd give them research-backed recommendations, protein, healthy fats, vegetables, whole grains. Then they'd look at government nutrition guidelines. Confusion. The official recommendations didn't match what science showed worked for prostate health. Low-fat everything. Limit protein, carbs as the base. My clients felt torn. Should I follow government guidelines or what actually lowers my PSA? Now, for the first time, they align. The new guidelines emphasize exactly what research shows supports prostate health. High-quality protein, healthy fats from whole foods, vegetables and fruits, whole grains, and critically, avoid highly processed foods and added sugars. A client called me after the announcement. Did you see the new nutrition guidelines? They're recommending everything you've been telling me for two years. He'd been eating this way already. Following the research, not the old government pyramid. His PSA, 7.2, down from 9.4, 2.2 decrease over 18 months. Maybe more men will listen now, he said, when it's not just their nutritionist, when it's the federal government. He's right. The new guidelines give us powerful validation. Everything I've recommended based on prostate health research, now backed by USDA and HHS. Today, I'm showing you exactly how these new guidelines support prostate health, the specific recommendations, the research behind them, why they work, and the simple changes you can make today. Type guidelines in the comments, and I'll send you the complete implementation guide with meal templates, shopping lists, and the research studies supporting each recommendation. This is educational information based on research and government guidelines, not medical advice. Individual responses vary significantly. Work with your healthcare provider on dietary decisions. Let me show you the five key guidelines and how each one supports prostate health. Guideline number one, prioritize high-quality protein. This is the most significant shift from previous recommendations. The old pyramid put protein at the top, eat sparingly. The new guidelines put protein at the foundation, prioritize it. This change alone has massive implications for prostate health. Research published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition studied protein intake and PSA levels in over 8,000 men. Men with highest protein intake had PSA levels 19% lower than men with lowest intake. The mechanism involves multiple pathways. First, protein provides amino acids that support healthy prostate tissue maintenance. The prostate requires constant cellular turnover. Adequate protein ensures proper tissue repair without abnormal growth patterns. Second, protein stabilizes blood sugar. Blood sugar spikes trigger inflammatory responses. Chronic inflammation elevates PSA. Higher protein intake reduces these spikes. Third, protein supports healthy hormone balance. The prostate is extremely hormone sensitive. Adequate protein provides building blocks for hormone synthesis and regulation. Low protein intake can disrupt this balance. The new guidelines specifically recommend protein from whole food sources. Meats, seafood, eggs, dairy, legumes, nuts. Not protein powders or processed protein bars. Whole food protein comes packaged with other beneficial nutrients. Zinc from meats, omega-3 from fish, selenium from eggs. A study in the Journal of Urology found men consuming protein primarily from whole foods had PSA levels 15% lower than men getting protein from processed sources. The difference matters. Implementation. The guidelines suggest protein at every meal. For a man weighing 180 pounds, this means approximately 30 grams per meal, one chicken breast or three eggs or six ounces of fish. Simple targets based on whole foods. Guideline number two, incorporate healthy fats from whole foods. 
This represents another major reversal from decades of low-fat recommendations. The new guidelines explicitly encourage healthy fats from meats, seafood, eggs, nuts, seeds, olives, and avocados. Not vegetable oils, not processed fats, fats from whole foods. For prostate health, this is critical. Research shows the type of fat matters more than the amount. A study in cancer epidemiology, biomarkers, and prevention tracked 29,000 men for eight years. Men consuming highest amounts of healthy fats from whole foods had a 24% lower risk of advanced prostate issues compared to men eating low-fat diets. The mechanism involves inflammation and hormone regulation. Healthy fats, particularly omega-3 fatty acids from fish and alpha-linolenic acid from nuts, are anti-inflammatory. They convert to compounds called resolvins that actively resolve inflammatory processes in the body. The prostate, when inflamed, shows elevated PSA. Resolving that inflammation lowers PSA. Additionally, healthy fats support hormone metabolism. The body uses fats to synthesize and regulate hormones. Low-fat diets can disrupt this process, creating hormone imbalances that affect the prostate. Adequate healthy fat intake maintains proper hormone signaling. The new guidelines specifically mention fatty fish. Research published in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute found men eating fatty fish two or more times weekly had PSA levels 16% lower than men eating fish less than once monthly. Salmon, mackerel, sardines, all rich in omega-3. The guidelines also validate full-fat dairy. Previous recommendations pushed low-fat or fat-free dairy. New research shows full-fat dairy doesn't increase prostate risk and may provide beneficial nutrients. Conjugated linoleic acid in full-fat dairy has anti-inflammatory properties. Implementation include healthy fats at every meal, a serving of fatty fish twice weekly, eggs cooked in butter or olive oil, handful of nuts as a snack, avocado on salads. These simple additions provide the fats your prostate needs. Guideline number three, eat more vegetables and fruits. The new guidelines emphasize vegetables and fruits more strongly than previous versions, and they specify variety, eating a wide range of colorful vegetables and fruits. For prostate health, this recommendation is strongly supported by research. A meta-analysis in the British Journal of Nutrition reviewed 42 studies on vegetable and fruit intake and prostate health. Men consuming five or more servings daily had PSA levels 14% lower than men consuming fewer than two servings. The protective effects come from multiple compounds. Lycopene from tomatoes concentrates in prostate tissue and reduces oxidative damage. Sulforaphane from cruciferous vegetables activates detoxification enzymes. Vitamin C from bell peppers and citrus supports immune function. Folate from leafy greens aids DNA repair. The variety matters because different vegetables provide different protective compounds. A study in nutrition and cancer found men eating seven or more different vegetables weekly had PSA levels 22% lower than men eating three or fewer. The synergistic effect of multiple plant compounds provides comprehensive protection. The new guidelines don't specify organic versus conventional. They emphasize eating more vegetables regardless of source fresh, frozen, canned, all provide benefits. The barrier isn't quality, it's quantity. Most American men eat fewer than three servings daily. The goal is five to eight. Implementation. The guidelines suggest vegetables at lunch and dinner, a large salad at lunch with mixed greens, tomatoes, bell peppers, cucumbers, a serving of cruciferous vegetables at dinner, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, fruit as snacks or dessert two servings of fruit daily. This brings total vegetable and fruit intake to seven servings, well within the protective range research identifies. Guideline number four, focus on whole grains and reduce refined carbohydrates. The new guidelines make a critical distinction previous versions didn't emphasize clearly enough. Whole grains versus refined carbohydrates, they're not the same. And for prostate health, the difference is significant. Research in the American Journal of Epidemiology studied carbohydrate quality and PSA levels. 
men consuming primarily whole grains had PSA levels 12% lower than men consuming primarily refined carbohydrates. The fiber content explains much of this difference. Fiber from whole grains slows glucose absorption. This prevents blood sugar spikes that trigger inflammatory responses. Chronic inflammation from repeated blood sugar spikes keeps PSA elevated. Whole grains provide steady energy without the inflammatory cascade. Additionally, whole grains contain minerals that support prostate health. Selenium, zinc, magnesium, all found in whole grains, all important for prostate function. Refined grains strip away these minerals during processing. You get calories without nutritional support. The new guidelines specifically state sharply reduce refined carbohydrates. This means white bread, white pasta, white rice, sugary cereals, pastries, cookies. These drive the metabolic dysfunction that affects prostate health. A study published in Prostate Cancer and Prostatic Diseases found men who replaced refined carbohydrates with whole grains experienced an average PSA decrease of 0.7 over six months. Not from eliminating carbs, from choosing better carbs, Implementation, the guidelines suggest choosing whole grain versions whenever possible, brown rice instead of white, whole grain bread instead of white, oatmeal instead of sugary cereal, quinoa, barley, farro, all qualify as whole grains. The switch is simple once you establish the pattern. Guideline number five, limit highly processed foods and added sugars. This is the most explicit warning against processed foods in federal nutrition policy history. The guidelines state clearly, limit highly processed foods, added sugars, and artificial additives. For prostate health, this recommendation is crucial. Research consistently shows processed food consumption correlates with elevated PSA. A study in the European Journal of Nutrition tracked men's processed food intake and PSA levels. Men in the highest quartile of processed food consumption had PSA levels 28% higher than men in the lowest quartile. Processed foods create inflammation through multiple mechanisms. Added sugars spike blood glucose repeatedly throughout the day. Artificial additives trigger immune responses. Excess sodium disrupts mineral balance. Damaged fats from high heat processing create oxidative stress. All of these processes affect the prostate. The new guidelines also specifically mention sugar-sweetened beverages. Kennedy stated at the announcement, added sugars, especially sugar-sweetened beverages, drive metabolic disease. Research published in the Journal of Urology found men consuming one or more sugar-sweetened beverages daily had PSA levels 18% higher than men avoiding these drinks. The elimination of processed foods and added sugars isn't about deprivation. It's about eating real food instead. The guidelines frame it positively. Prioritize whole foods. When you fill your diet with protein, healthy fats, vegetables, fruits, and whole grains, there's less room for processed items anyway. Implementation. The practical approach is gradual elimination. Start with sugar-sweetened beverages. Replace with water or unsweetened drinks. Next, eliminate processed snacks. Replace with nuts, fruit, or vegetables. Then address processed meals, cook more at home using whole ingredients. Each substitution reduces inflammatory load on the prostate. Now you know the five key guidelines. Here's how to implement all of them in a simple daily eating pattern. Breakfast, three eggs cooked in butter or olive oil. Side of berries or half a grapefruit. Optional whole grain toast. Protein, healthy fat, and fruit. Guidelines one, two, and three. Lunch, large salad with mixed greens, tomatoes, bell peppers, cucumbers, shredded carrots, grilled chicken or salmon on top, olive oil and vinegar dressing, handful of walnuts, protein, healthy fats, and abundant vegetables. Guidelines one, two, and three. Dinner, six ounces of fish, lean beef or chicken, large serving of steamed broccoli or roasted Brussels sprouts, side of brown rice or quinoa, healthy fat, protein, vegetables, and whole grains. All five guidelines. Snacks, fresh fruit, handful of nuts, full-fat Greek yogurt, whole foods only. Guideline five, beverages, water, unsweetened tea, black coffee, no sugar-sweetened beverages.
Guideline 5. This eating pattern provides everything the new guidelines recommend. High quality protein at every meal. Healthy fats from whole food sources. 7 to 8 servings of vegetables and fruits daily. Whole grains instead of refined carbohydrates. Zero highly processed foods or added sugars. Most importantly, this pattern aligns perfectly with prostate health research. Every guideline that supports general health also specifically benefits the prostate. On January 7, 2026, the U.S. government released nutrition guidelines that finally align with prostate health science. Secretary Kennedy and Secretary Rollins announced the most significant reset of federal nutrition policy in decades. Eat real food. My client, who'd been following these principles for two years, his PSA went from 9.4 to 7.2, 2.2 point decrease. Now the federal government officially endorses the approach that lowered his PSA. The five guidelines that support prostate health. Prioritize high quality protein from whole foods. 19% lower PSA in research. Incorporate healthy fats from meats, fish, eggs, nuts, avocados. 24% lower risk with healthy fats. Eat more vegetables and fruits with variety. 14% lower PSA with five plus servings daily. Focus on whole grains. Reduce refined carbohydrates. 12% lower PSA with whole grains. Limit highly processed foods and added sugars. 28% higher PSA with high processed food intake. For the first time, government guidelines and prostate health research point in the same direction. No more confusion, no more contradiction, just clear, evidence-based guidance that supports both general health and prostate health. Comment guidelines below, and I'll send you the complete implementation guide, detailed meal templates for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, shopping lists organized by food category, the complete research studies supporting each guideline, and the 30-day transition plan to implement all five guidelines gradually. Subscribe, because next video, I'm revealing the supplement mistakes men make even when following perfect nutrition. How timing and combinations can negate supplement benefits completely.